Hello and welcome to Diecast Restos. I'm Jason and this is a Matchbox 10F Plymouth Grand Fury. They were made in the Lesney era from 1979 but also transcended their 1983 bankruptcy and subsequent takeover by Universal Toys. They were produced up until 1986. This one is an original Lesney product made in England. Here's a variation on how it should look with the decals intact. And here is a real police Plymouth Grand Fury. Some versions of the model post Lesney had the door castings removed so the sides were smooth, presumably for tampo application. The decals changed over the years, particularly during the Universal era. The earliest examples simply had police written on either side before the Metro Police traffic control decals were added. These are the ones that I'll be applying today. Wheel choice was nearly always these dot dash type, though eight dots are known on some versions. Window color varied. Alongside blue was a rose red all over, or amber with a blue light bar. A special edition for the Star Car Collection was created in 1998, based on the US TV show Adam 12. So here are the dismantled parts to the car ready for restoration. The Grand Fury was Plymouth's full-size car introduced in 1975. It ran for just two years until 1977 when it was dropped from Plymouth's lineup. It was available as a four-door wagon or sedan, two or four-door hardtop or a two-door coupe. On the back of the 1973 oil crisis, the Grand Fury selection of gas-guzzling V8 engines didn't prove popular and sales were disappointing across all of Chrysler's C-bodied vehicles. As such, the Grand Fury was out of production from 1977 to 1980. Its return was the downsized R-body Grand Fury, now only available as a four-door pillared sedan. It was produced to fill a low-cost full-size gap in the market that made it suitable for fleet, police or taxi use. It had an inline 6 3.7 litre engine or optional 5.2 or 5.9 litre V8s. But it was again short lived as it was discontinued midway through 1981. The third and final generation Grand Fury was the 1982 to 1989 model year M platform car. Once more, it had been downsized, which now made it a mid size rather than full size offering. Again, the Grand Fury was a popular fleet and police vehicle, but it remained unchanged during its seven year run, ultimately leading to the demise of the name badge in 1989. Anyway, I've now cleaned up the base, wheels and the internals, now it's time to focus on the body, starting with stripping the paint. I've recently opened up memberships to the channel after a few viewers messaged me about alternatives to Patreon. If you click the join button below, next to the subscribe button, you'll see three different levels of membership to choose from. If you want to help out the channel and get access to exclusive badges and emojis, there is a helping hand level, which you'll be credited for at the end of the videos. The early access level gets you these features, plus access to my releases a whole week early. Then there's the Megatron level, titled Jason's New Best Friend where if you sign up, you'll receive one casting of your choice from the previous month's restorations or customs each month that you are subscribed, as well as all the previous perks. So click that link and sign up. Now back to the casting, I've used some 3M tape and Tamiya masking tape to expose the fenders ready for black paint. Prior to the TS14 application, I do spray on a layer of TS13 clear to seal up the edges of the tape. After two coats of black and once it has dried, I begin to peel away the layers of the tape. This is a very nervy process every single time I do it. I'm not convinced that this is the best method as I do tend to get some overspray regardless of my tape choice and clear coating. If anyone has any other suggestions, I'm always willing to give them a try. There's a bit of an uneven line on the front left there. I had anticipated this and will touch up the areas of overspray where needed. On the whole though, in my opinion, it's a fairly good representation of how the original car appeared. 
So now that's done, my problem areas seem to have been the very far edges and the corners where the tape joined. Luckily though, I have my Uniposca 0.7mm white paint pen handy to eradicate those marks. The corner looks much, much sharper after a few dabs. Now here are my reproduction decals for the Metro Police version of the casting, the only ones I could find. I will leave a link to their source in the description below. As you saw, they are quite convincing and very similar to the factory applied markings. The only difference I noticed, and it is pretty minor, is that the decals appear more dark grey than black like the original. This I really don't mind though, I'd rather have a repro decal with accurate font or shapes, logos or symbols than having a 100% match on the colour. One thing though on these, the decal backing paper did seem very thin and the decals tended to crumple easily, especially on first application, which I've mostly edited out as my fingers and thumbs tended to obscure the camera. But they turned out okay, even after going back into the water bath a few times. Still, as I apply the final decals on each side, I'm pleased with how it has come together. The decals have made a big difference. So my final two tasks are to apply and dry off the Mr. Mark softer solution. Once that's dry, I coat the body in another layer of clear coat. This helps the paint layering between the black and the white not feel like such a huge step. Right, so on to putting it all back together again. Firstly, the refreshed blue tinted window piece and beacon is inserted. Over that goes the cleaned crisp white interior. Lastly, the base, which incorporates the grille and bumpers with the wheels already reattached, is fitted over the two rivet posts and secured with a screw. So here is the Lesney Matchbox 10F Plymouth Grand Fury police car as it appeared earlier. These versions with the simple police wording on either side were missing any other decals, so a prior owner obviously decided to sticker theirs up. The black markings on the fenders had mostly worn away, while there were remnants of red pen on the back. The originally painted metal base was dull, as was the translucent window piece. And so, this is how the graceless Grand Fury now looks. This is another of those builds where the decals are everything. They really set the whole thing off and are so accurate to the original. I polished and then chromed up the bumper and grille cluster so that sparkles better than new. I preferred that over a silver coat as it stands out that much more. The plastics have cleaned up tremendously, with the window piece a much sharper blue while the wheels have been recoated in gloss and chrome. I think the black fenders came out quite well in the end after retouching with my Uniposca pen. So that's all for today, as I mentioned earlier, channel memberships are now open via YouTube, so do take a look by clicking that join button for more info. Otherwise do check out my Patreon and Instagram for previews, and stick around to the end to see this casting in some green light hot pursuit wheels. Don't forget to like, comment and subscribe, and I'll see you again for the next one. Bye for now.